So let's let's start, I guess. So good morning and welcome uh, to the uh, seventh episode of our Tech Talks on Air show. Um, before we actually go into the informational part of, of uh, today's session, I'll traditionally, um, I'm going to give some uh, housekeeping information. So you are all on mute currently. Um, if you have any questions, please utilize the Q&A panel for that. Um, do not um, use the chat window. Do not ask, please, with the panelists or um, anybody else in the chat window, because in this case, we, weren't, we will not be able to track all the questions and the answers to them. Okay, so use the Q&A panel. And uh, as always, after the session, you will get all the materials, you will get the link to the recording, and you will get the slides, and you will get the uh, questions and the answers to them as well. Um, okay, so today we are going to talk about documentation training and some important tools. So today, today's session is delivered by uh, my colleague Claude Lipover and uh, by me as well. So uh, before we go into the, uh, into the tools and um, in, into the discussion itself, um, a few comments on that side. So first of all, we do have a lot of tools, okay, and we will not talk about all of them today. Our aim, first of all, today is give you the understanding of what tools we have, where to look for information, where to search for help, where, where to get some support. And uh, what we wanted to focus today on is basically the tools and um, important things that are available to partners and to the customers. Okay, so that's why we are, we are not going to talk more um, about the things like partner portal or something like that. Okay. Um, the um, the second thing that I wanted to mention, so the slides are built in the way so that after we send them to you, you can use that as a uh, catalog of all the tools because um, we included a lot of links inside and um, uh, the idea was that you can take the slides and then go through them, find the right tool and get get to it just by clicking the link. So my my ask to you guys do not, do not please do not uh, go over the links that you see on the screen because it will totally uh, destroy uh, your involvement in today's session okay okay so um, first choice tools so we will start with uh, some simple things and uh, we will start with the documentation piece so as you probably know we have a documentation portal which can be accessed by um, going uh, to the documentation.extremenetworks.com Okay, so this is the centralized archive. This is the centralized point where you get all the documentation for all the software and hardware products that uh, we have. So quick reference guides, user guides, um, installation guides, um, comment reference guides, all of that are available there. So you just simply go onto our uh, website. You can go uh, to the documentation.extremenetworks.com or you can simply go to extremenetworks.com, uh, go to resources, um, and find the documentation there, okay? Um, on the documentation site itself, there are multiple uh, useful links that you can utilize to get to some other areas on the site to get additional information as well. One of the important things that are published over there are release notes. Release notes are pieces of information where we uh, put all the news, all the feature descriptions, all the new features that we have implemented on all the products. So in case we have a new version of software or a new uh, version of some hardware or an appliance, you can get all the information, all the new features on supported hardware, on everything basically in a release note. And it, it is publicly available over there. Um, the next thing, uh, next big um, area on the site, um, is dedicated to policies and warranties. Sometime, sometimes it's really important to get the information that is published over there because all the warranty terms and conditions, all the services descriptions and all the services terms and condi conditions like SLAs, like rules of the services, like service availability matrices, uh, which tell us uh, where we can actually offer a service in which part of the planet or where, where we cannot, are published there. Uh, some other uh, things that might be required from time to time when we are working on some projects, uh, things like MTBF values. MTBF stands for mean time between failure 
um, and it shows how actually like the, the more or less empirical value of uh, how much time a box can work without any failure. So these values are also published over there. And uh, sometimes we see a lot of requests on the SNMP MEBs, which are required um, in order to enable support for our equipment on some management systems or on some third party software or on the software that we um, develop as well. So um, some other important things that are published on policies and warranties area of our site. One of them is the um, end of sale announcements archive. Okay, so anytime we announce an end of sale of um, any piece of hardware, it is published there and you can easily get that information by searching. Uh, there's a search field and the search engine works very, very nicely for you. Uh, just as a reminder, end of sale does not mean that the product is kind of, you know, yeah, it's lost, forgotten, and uh, that's it. Each and every product, depending on the software uh, it is running, depending on the platform that we're talking about, has its life cycle. So basically, end of sale does not mean that, you know, the product is gone, it's dead, or whatever. Usually and normally, after the end of sale announcement, we're still continuing to support that product for five additional years. So it's not the end of the world. Anyway, anyway, you can um, find all the necessary information on the end of sale and end of support and um, announcements over there. Uh, another important tool that is available on that particular area of the site is the extreme warranty finder. So if you're interested, which type of warranty by default covers this or that uh, hardware, you can find that information there with a detailed description of that, of what actually, what, <laughs> of what that actually means. Okay, so if we have like, lifetime, limited lifetime warranty, what that actually means, what, what that means to you, and how it is different from a um, full service support uh, that we always offer as a part of our product portfolio. Uh, next thing that is also important and the, uh, sometimes useful is the hardware and software compatibility matrices that are available also um, on the document, documentation side. Uh, what information is posted there? So I, I think that the most important one is that we publish the recommended version of various software releases for all the platforms that we have. So in case you're thinking, okay, there are multiple versions of, uh, operate, of an operating system, so which one should I pick? Okay, and uh, you can actually go to that side and find the information on which, exactly which version Extreme recommends to run on a particular piece of hardware. And uh, another information also sometimes useful is which software version is supported on which platform. Okay, so in this particular case, there is an example of the new platform of the X465 switches. And uh, here we can find that it is supported starting with um, XOS operating system version 3, uh, 30.2.1. Okay, so sometimes it's useful to see. And, um, determine which type of operating system you will require uh, for a particular platform. Uh, the next thing that is kind of hidden, and I'm pretty sure that you, that many of you have not seen that, is the optics compatibility tool. And I have decided to, instead of uh, showing you a bunch of screenshots, I'd rather do a quick, quick overview uh, with the help of live demonstration. So extreme optics. You can access it by simply going to optics.extremenetworks.com. And uh, what you get is basically this. So you end up in this um, interesting tool. So there is uh, some quick help, which, uh, which tells you what to do first. Um, here at the top, we can see various switching platforms that are supported uh, by this tool. And in fact, these are all platforms that are produced by Extreme. So basically, all, for all of them, this tool works pretty, uh, pretty nicely. Then we pick, let's say, Axos. Uh, when we go into Axos, what we see is the matrix of all supported optics for all the platforms. And uh, here you can see the uh, SKU for, for the optics for this module, for this particular module. What's the uh, connection type? What is the rate? What is the form factor? Uh, what is the distance that this, optic, uh, that this optical module operates on? Uh, fiber type and then which is 
uh, why this tool was built for the 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 purpose of this tool is actually it's, it tells you on which platforms this module is supported on okay so you see the full matrix uh let's say you need a particular module uh that will um let's say fire up starting with two kilometers ending up with 25 kilometers so you can actually filter out a lot of optics and still get the idea behind which modules support which platforms uh, this is something that um, a lot of partners and um, some of our customers uh, have been asking for for quite a while and uh, this is finally that uh, this is finally has been developed and has been exposed to the uh, public okay so um, there are some other additional features in this tool that you can utilize. Uh, basically, there, uh, there is an opportunity to uh, export everything, export the, the, uh, the table that you are seeing right now, export it into a CSV file and use it for your um, own purposes. You can actually, uh, by clicking on this button, you can actually uh, save the search. So if you search for something and uh, if you filter filtered out, some optics you can save that and send uh, the result of your search as a link okay because this is still an application if we just simply um, you see if we just simply uh, take this url and send it over to somebody they will end up um, not with our search results but with you know the, the general table and that's it so that there is an opportunity to send the search results as they are viewed by you uh, to somebody else uh, and of course, uh, we can filter out by platform. So we can say, okay, what optics are supported on this particular uh, platform of X460 um, G2? And as you uh, might have noticed already, uh, if you go here, if you hover your mouse over, uh, over a particular module, you will get a lot of uh, additional information like starting with what software release it is supported on which platform. So it's a uh, really, really um, nice effort by our internal engineering team. And uh, it is absolutely available for everybody. It's publicly available if you go to optics.extremenetworks.com. Uh, okay, let me get back to, um, uh, to the slides. And uh, please don't worry, even if I don't have the slides for some of the uh, tools that I'm uh, showing you uh, in a live format, I still have the backup slides in the slide deck. So you will get uh, the links and uh, you will get the basic description for each and every tool. So don't worry about that one. Um, mm -hmm. Next. Uh, it is. Next. Sorry for interruption. Yeah, sure. Uh, we have a question in our uh, Q&A panel uh, about okay. the optics and the wavelengths can we actually get the wavelength information of an optic in, in the uh, uh, software or, or, or on the website you mean in this tool yes correct well um just looking quickly um, at it I, I don't see you know right away but i'm pretty sure that if we go uh into some details uh, let me take it offline. So w when I uh, give the floor back to Claude, I will take a look, okay, in more details. Okay, so if we just um, uh, go back to some other tools, so um, getting support, that's a pretty uh, important thing, um, important set of tools that you can utilize in order to get support. And the first one is the hub or the community side that uh, we have. So it, it can be reached simply by uh, community.extremenetworks.com. Um, that is a kind of a forum uh, in, a, in a modern looking way, uh, forum for everybody. Um, and um, anybody can ask any question in there. So it has a categorization uh, based on products, uh, based on some technologies. You can actually ask um, anything um you want over there and uh you you will get some answers and uh the, the cool thing about this tool is that it is being monitored by uh, extreme employees okay so it's uh, yeah it, it is supported by the community so uh partners customers anybody who uses extreme uh, equipment um can actually post some answer or uh help 
somebody else, all that, but it is being monitored by extreme employees as well. So um, pretty often this tool becomes the starting playground or let's say the starting point where you have a question and, uh, or a problem and uh, you ask the community and then suddenly it turns out that uh, for some reason we do not support that and uh, this should be a feature request. And actually from that platform, many, many feature requests uh, were taken before and um, have been implemented um, as a software features, okay? And um, in case you have some complex networking problems, that's exactly the right place to ask your questions. That's a really, really powerful tool where you can get a lot of help from, uh, from the community. And uh, another important thing about this one is that uh, the AeroHive community, so for, for those of you folks who uh, used to work with AeroHive, so the, uh, AeroHive used to have something like that and they called it AeroHive community. So it has been ported over here. So all, all, the, uh, all the conversations, all the previous posts um, have been ported um, into that tool. Um, Another, I would say, vital thing is the GTAC knowledge base. So it's a um, knowledge base that is maintained by our GTAC engineers. Um, you cannot post anything over there, but it's a critical asset for you if you have any problems. So it, it is heavily used by Extreme itself. So we as CEs, we use it uh, on a daily basis. And I would say that in case you um, have any issues in case you face any problem, the first place you would want to go to to find some answers is actually this. Um, it's organized in a, in a form of articles. Um, it has a beautiful search engine that really works. Um, so you can actually search the um, search for some information on the cases, some information on um, troubleshooting guides. Um, and uh, besides, uh, a lot of just technical articles are also published there. So even if they have nothing to do with GTAC itself, with case resolutions, with any troubleshooting, with any problems, um, there's still tons of um, technical articles that are just, um, you know, describing and explaining some uh, technical things and technical features. Just like this, um, an example uh, that you can see, um, like what is management frame protection and uh, how does it help, right? And um, along with that, all the articles are built in a, a structure like symptoms, cause and resolution. So you will find um, steps on how to actually resolve your problem if you have one, okay? And I can tell you that this tool is, um, so it's, um, it's maintained by GTAC engineers, as I mentioned. Uh, but what is important after every case or almost every case, if this has not been reflected, like the case, the cause, the resolution path, if this has not been uh, reflected in this database, it will be, okay? So every time uh, the guys are actually maintaining all the information and keeping this, um, this database up to date. So it's really, really very, very critical tool uh, for you to utilize. And you don't have to have any access. You don't have to have uh, any accounts to get uh, to get into this one. So please use it. And uh, this is a really, really nice resource for everyone. Um, the next tool um, in terms of um, getting support. So this is the support portal, okay? So this is the central uh, site that you would use in case you have any um, any problems and you, you want to fire up a case, uh, open up a case with a GTAC, um, in case you want to um, track the case um, state right now, see what details inside the case, what's going on, and um, et cetera, et cetera. Um, so uh, in order to get into this portal, you need to have an account. And uh, moreover, you need to have a uh, current and active uh, service contract as well. As you probably know, in Extreme, we have two uh, different types of service that we uh, provide. So the first one is called uh, Partner Works, and the second is called Extreme Works. So uh, as the names imply, Partner Works is when we hand off some of the case handling and some of the troubleshooting tasks to our partners. So they become our, let's say, first line of uh, first and second line of um, help and um, first and second line of technical support. Extreme works is where Extreme works uh, from the beginning till the end. Okay, and in case you're a customer and you have an Extreme works 
service agreement with us, then you can actually open the cases and ask the questions and in, inter, uh, interact with Extreme directly. Okay, so that's uh, the big difference. But in any case, if you have an active service contract or if you are in a partner um, providing services for uh, for your customers, um, you can get access to this Extreme portal to 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 the support portal and uh, work with cases. Uh, the other thing that is quite important is this is the um, this is the place where you can get access to all the uh, downloads. Okay, so if you needed to download a software uh, for anything that is installed in your network, you go there and uh, you have access to um, to the software that you are entitled to. Okay, um, another thing that is also available there, you can see this um, assets here. So uh, on this portal, you can also track all your assets, all your licensing um, information and um, related things. Uh, so in this slide, you will find this link to the GTAC user guide, which gives um, a lot more information, a lot more details on how to, um, how to um, interact with the GTAC, how to open cases, you know, what different SLAs, all, the, all those details are available there. Um, the next part is certifications and trainings. So, um, Certifications. Um, we, as a networking vendor, we uh, provide a uh, career certification uh, path, right, or paths. It, it, it would be uh, more precise to say. Um, so here's the metrics. Um, I didn't have any purpose for you to memorize this. Okay, so this is just to give you a basic idea that we have different levels of certifications, and uh, that those uh, certifications are usually tied to one or uh, the other uh, product or solution vertical, okay? And in inside each and every vertical, we have different types of trainings and different types of certifications as well. So they are all described on the right. Um, extreme sales specialist is, um, let's say the, the, um, the certification and the training um, intended for the salespeople more or less, but actually it gives a lot of information on the value of the products of extreme networks. And sometimes it's uh, also useful for technical people to uh, attend something like that. Um, extreme sales specialists, all the trainings, they are free of charge, they are available online and uh, you do not need to pay anything for, um, for achieving that certification, which is fair, right? Uh, the other uh, level or the other type of certification is extreme design specialist. Um, these trainings are intended for pre-sales, so they give information on how to position products, how to design solutions with Extreme Networks product, and um, uh, the related information as well. It is also free of charge, absolutely available uh, online, and uh, you don't have to pay for it, and this is fair as well. Um, the other type of certifications, is what we call extreme certified specialist. So this is a fully blown career certification uh, intended uh, mostly for people who deploy solutions because inside the certification and training, we give you the information how to configure, how to install, um, how to troubleshoot and how to integrate various solutions, okay? Um, so on this ECS, extreme certified specialist. So we, we have a few flavors of those and they are all uh, split into uh, product categories or uh, solution categories. Uh, so we have ECS for uh, Campus Fabric or XMC, wireless. Um, so basically you see the list. And the normal, uh, normal path, the usual path to achieving such a certification as an ECS is like that. So basically you have to go to an instructor lab course, uh, be it an on-site event or it can be online as well, but you have to interact with an ATP. And uh, then you do a lab um, also with the ATP and then you do the final exam, which is usually a, um, a test. Um, so this is, let's say the normal part, but uh, some time ago we started to approach a different, um, <clears throat> it, we started to implement a different approach to um, getting the certification. Uh, for the items that are marked with green, as you see on the screen, we do have free video trainings available um, on one of our websites, um, on one of our training facilities, which we call Dojo. 
Okay, so uh, again, for the uh, ones that are marked in green, <clears throat> you can actually go and have that training online absolutely free of charge. Okay, so if you want to get the knowledge, it's absolutely free for you. If you want to get certified after you get the knowledge, you can actually go to an ATP and uh, do the lab and then do the final exam and you get your uh, credential for that. Okay, but in order to get the knowledge, which is very, very important for customers, I believe um, you don't have to pay anything. So it's absolutely free. So um, I mentioned the tool where you can get um, that information. So we call it Dojo. I will do a very, very quick demonstration of how it looks like. Let me quickly get back to sharing the screen. And uh, here it is, Dojo plot platform. So it is accessible by going to dojo.extremenetworks.com. And um, you, ha you have to have an account over there. So you need to be registered with Extreme. Uh, so all our, all our partners are registered uh, by default and you can use the same credentials that you're using to access other uh, tools in Extreme to get access to this Dojo uh, platform. It is all also available for our customers, um, but in case you're not registered, you will have to, okay? So uh, what we can get here, um, if we go to the certifications, area in this side. Um, here we see all the uh, courses that are available, all the, all the certification uh, materials that are available to you. And uh, as we just discussed, there are materials for sales specialists, for design specialists, and for the ECS level certification as well. So let me click on the ECS. Um, the system filters out for me. Um, all those things. And if I go, let's say to uh, this one, ECS Extreme Wireless Call. This is just an example because all the others look the same. If I go inside, I will see different options on how I can actually get access to the materials. And if we support the free training, the free materials for this particular case, you will see this small button view. So if I click on view free videos, it will get, it will get me to the content itself okay so um only one registration you go to this dojo and uh, basically that's it you are done you have access to all the materials so as you can see this is a full version of training content okay which usually takes like three four five days um, um on site um in an atp uh, facility so you have all the videos here Okay, the only thing, the only drawback, well, it's not the only drawback, but one um, apparent drawback of having this um, online education is that you cannot ask questions, right, directly. So, of course, there are some, you know, uh, drawbacks that we have to take into account, but I think that having all the trainings for all the major products that we have, all the major solution sets that we have available online and free of charge is um, absolutely a good thing to have. Um, then, so certifications, okay, done, um, understood. So uh, the next area in the side are, uh, the next area is electives. So it's basically some trainings that are not uh, necessary in order to get certified, but still they um, provide you with some valuable content as well. And uh, the beautiful thing about electives is that, come on. Yeah, we call it um, Murphy effect, All right, Tamara? Okay, so while it still um, tries to load, so um, on the electives webpage, what, you, you get access, okay, here it is. So you get access to some additional materials. So here they are, and here are the types of them. So usually these are short videos, well, comparably short, like one hour, maybe one hour and a half. But the beauty here is that you have access to the materials that are produced by Extreme for Extreme. Okay, so you see those power hours. Power hours are our internal trainings done by our engineering developers, uh, PLM, um, for the internal SC community. Okay, so usually it's just one topic taken and uh, the guys go deeply into technical details 
um, describing how this thing works, what is the value, what are the cat caveats, and uh, et cetera, et cetera. So it, this is a really, really very, very um, uh, critical resource for us internally. And it is being exposed to the broader community uh, of the partners and customers. Um, along with the um, power hours, what we have here are some demonstration videos where we show how we would demonstrate this or that feature. So a lot of materials, a lot of content is available here as well. Um, and for partners, um, we also what, what we also publish is um, Compass sessions. So these are also internal sessions on the roadmap uh, features that uh, we get internally in Xtreme. Okay. So um, here it is. Uh, of course, you can track all your progress here. You can track all the certif certificates that you have already obtained. And um, this is also available on this website. And I will get back to the slides. OK, uh, just a few more words on um, certification training and um, um, Dojo side. So along with the certifications, along with this ECS, EDS, ESS um, uh, certification paths, we also have some additional path that you may take. And uh, this path, is, as we are like, as we are talking about Dojo, um, it, it is um, a given in a form of martial arts uh, progress um, path. So. Um, we call them belts. So uh, in case you fulfill some of the requirements, you get a belt. So uh, for the technical path, for the technical path, which is uh, right here on the top of this diagonal, um, if you get one ECS certification, you also automatically achieve the blue belt. If you get three ECS, you get the purple belt. If you get five ECS certification, you, certifications, you achieve the black belt. So this kind of um so first of all this recognize you uh, among the crowd okay so we do recognize people with uh purple belts and black belts absolutely you will get access to some additional information uh you will get access to this beautiful badge of uh, having this this belt and moreover if you have the purple belt this automatically well not that automatically but anyway the requirements for blue belt sorry the requirements for purple belt are enough to get your extreme hero uh, recognition as well okay so as you're probably aware we have extreme hero community and uh, those, those folks um, enjoy some additional um, nice materials nice events and nice um, giveaways from extreme and nice recognition uh, of course then another thing that we have is called ninja challenge uh, this is a uh, another way of you uh, getting certified, and uh, in this case, uh, we kind of say, okay, you will get your ECS certification or certifications, but you will not have to go into any trainings. Just right away, if you are ready, we are ready to test your knowledge, and if you uh, pass the test. Uh, which uh, which consists of two parts, so basically the lab and the uh, the knowledge test, like quiz or test, or whatever. So if you pass that, we automatically grant you ECS certifications with some additional uh, benefits along the way. So uh, on the dojo in this portal, there is much much more details on this ninja challenge, and I encourage you to um, uh, to to get a look into that. Um, another thing that is available, so as we discussed, for many, many ECS trainings, which are normal career certification trainings, we have uh, videos uh, free of charge and publicly available in the dojo. But for one of them, for the extreme um, certified specialists on the extreme wireless cloud side, what we are offering right now, uh, the offer is um, valid only till the 20th of July. So uh, if you want to participate in that, uh, then make sure you register yourself till the uh, till July the 20th. Uh, here we offer a complete certification training completely free of charge. Okay, so it will include video trainings, it will include the lab and it will include the final test. So this is the opportunity for all of us basically to get certified absolutely for free in one particular topic that is 
um, getting much, much more attention um, uh, lately, right? Which, which is Extreme Cloud uh, IQ platform. All right. So uh, the next part, developers. So if we have anybody who uh, develop things, so programming, um, writing programs, scripts, and uh, basically you know, who can and know, knows how to utilize automation, we have uh, some special portals and some uh, special sites for you as well. So the first one is developer, developer portal, uh, which is developer.extremenetworks.com. There you can find all the documentation uh, for developers, um, the documentation on the API side, on the SDK sides, uh, the documentation how to develop programs for various operating systems, uh, utilizing the scripting tools that they support. And uh, there's also some access to client libraries. So if you're a developer and if you're looking for some information, how you can utilize this or that API or SDK, um, th that's the right place for you to go to. Um, another big portal for developers is uh, published on GitHub. So if you're a developer, you know what GitHub is. Uh, it's a massive collection of um, uh, ready to use scripts and programs supported by the community. And uh, you, can, you can do many, many things with that one. So actually the first thing you can use all the scripts that are published there. And uh, we have scripts starting for, for, from like Exos applications, Exos uh, based scripts. Uh, we have some specialized scripts for XMC, like XMC workflows. We have um, got even uh, XMC report views over there. And uh, we have tons of uh, many, many other um, useful things for developers over there. So you can just go there and download and use that right away. Okay, so they are absolutely free of charge, uh, of course, and uh, you can use them. But what, what you can do more you can actually uh, participate in that uh, developing so you can develop you can take a script you can modify it you can make a more advanced version of that script you can publish it back so you can be a part of that community and the, if you're familiar with github you know how easy it is and basically github is the tool for uh, for programming together right for um, you know, teamwork in terms of programming. So have a look um, over there because uh, sometimes we publish their information which is not directly related to developing things and to programming like uh, virtual machines for Exos and for VOS are also published there. And uh, along with the documentation, along with some guidelines on how to install on uh, what is supported, what is not, the limitations and et cetera, et cetera. So, very, um, very important tool for the developers. And uh, I think the final uh, section for the tools on my side is the demo tools and facilities that we provide to you. And probably I talk too much. Do we have any outstanding Q and A's? Oh, sorry, Q and A's questions, of course. No, we don't have. Okay, cool. So um, let's get back to the demo tools now. So the first one, and um, uh, which I guess is the most used one, is the remote demo facility. So this is a remotely accessible um, demonstration infrastructure that can be utilized by uh, Extreme employees and by partners. So this is absolutely intended, not for partners and not for Extreme employees. This is intended to uh, show our solutions and to show the power and the benefits of using our products to the customers. Okay, so this is the tool for everybody. Yeah, it, yes, it can be used only by us or by partners. Um, so what you get, uh, what you get with that? So this is basically a um, a tool that enables you to have a customized. Um, isolated demonstration room where you have all the products, um, well, almost all the products available to you and uh, you have all the management systems up and running um, like XMC, Extreme Management Center, um, XCAs, um, lots of switching hardware, lots of uh, other software which are available to you. So you can just simply, if you have access to it, you can simply book a room it will, it will be automatically created for you and you will have an RDP link to that room. And then utilizing the RDP, you get a remote um, access to this um, a remote desktop and then you can get access to all the products and solutions that are 
uh, available there. So as you can see, the, here's a screenshot from a standard uh, demonstration room. As you can see, it's uh, pretty, pretty uh, well populated with um, lots of software and lots of hardware as well, right? And uh, we do have um, some third party um, boxes available over there too. And uh, what is um, what is also important is that along with the tool itself, along with this infrastructure that we provide to you, we also have a set of documentation on how to do the demonstrations themselves. Okay, so just a guidelines on, okay, what, uh, here I show you this, here I show that, here's happening this and that, here's the value behind all of that, and here's the benefit for, um, for those whom you are showing this, uh, this to. Um, Another thing, um, another tool, uh, this is Extreme Cloud IQ remote demonstration. It is also available for our partners and for our Extreme employees. This is a way for um, anybody uh, in that community to show the Extreme Cloud IQ filled up with, uh, with data. So currently we have two verticals um, that are implemented in, in this demonstration uh, facility. So the verticals are education and retail. So if you have a retail customer, or if you are a retail customer and you are interested in getting more information on how the uh, Extreme Cloud IQ platform can um, help you as a retail customer, uh, in which ways we can ease the pains that you have and uh, which um, intellectual tools we provide along with the cloud, this is the right tool to use. Uh, in order to get access to the uh, Extreme Cloud IQ remote demo, as well as in order to get access to the remote demonstration facility that I just mentioned, um, a partner engineer has to be uh, granted that access, okay? And uh, this access is granted by SE. So if you are interested in getting access uh, to this remote demonstration, just ask your fellow Extreme SE and uh, we will take it from there and see how we can enable you to get access. One important requirement is that you being a uh, nice partner and being a nice engineer, you are in good standing in Dojo. So you get, you actually um, get information from Dojo, you, you listen to the content and you uh, get some achievements. That's quite important. Um, another tool, a uh, big, big tool that is available to all of us is uh, what we call customer training centers or CTC. So CTC is an on-site facility. Um, so it, it is a um, infrastructure filled up with hardware and software and uh, filled up with some additional tools that can be utilized in order to make customized demonstrations and customized proof of concepts. Okay, so um, the uh, topology that you see is the logical topology for the things that we have in one of the CTCs. So basically that's a place where we can take our partners and customers and um, for instance, try to reproduce the networks that a customer has and uh, make the proof of concepts on that reproduced piece of network. So we have tons of equipment available over there uh, the CTCs are usually equipped with um, uh, ICSIA traffic generators, so we can actually generate some traffic um, with full bandwidth. And um, along with that, we have a lot of third-party equipment available over there, so we can actually uh, simulate and emulate um, the various setups and uh, various environments. So this thing which is important right now because we cannot uh, still, it's really hard to visit and to go on site anywhere. This thing is totally available as a virtual uh, virtual um, POCs, as a virtual event. Um, so all the visits are organized by account teams. So that means that if you have a customer, if you are a customer and you are interested in um, complex testing, uh, that means that we, uh, together with the extreme account team, we have to uh, discuss that and organize this virtual visit. Another important thing is that this is not just a bunch of boxes, bunch of hardware in one place, and that's it. You come and you do whatever you want. Every uh, visit, be, be it an on-site visit or a virtual one, is controlled by a specially created Tiger team. Okay, so the uh, the brightest, the bright-minded engineers that are in, in charge of that lab 
are becoming a part of the Tiger team that works on a specific case, on a specific customer visit, and um, a specific POC. So that's really, really interesting um, and complex tool that we can use uh, in order to simulate and test various scenarios. Yeah, and this is just um, another view on uh, the equipment side that is available in one of the CTCs in Reading, the United Kingdom. Okay, so uh, I guess that's it um, from me, and uh, I'm ready to hand it over to Claude, unless we have any outstanding questions. No, I don't see any questions. Okay, so then it's over to you. Well, there is a one question about that someone <clears throat> cannot access the remote demo site. Mm. Uh, so, well, I think it's a case for... Okay, the uh, there's one, one, one thing that I think that I didn't mention. So, even if you have a uh, an account with extreme like you're using portal or whatever in order to get access to the remote demo or remote demo extreme cloud iq uh we need to enable that okay so um please drop an email to uh, your fellow extreme sc and uh we will we will just enable your access to the remote demo okay so it's a manual process so we need to control who access that and um, yeah so we'll, we'll, we'll take it like that okay Okay, good. So um, I guess Claude, um, the floor is yours. Okay, could you stop sharing? Okay, good, good. Okay, so good morning, everyone. So I'm Claude Lefoire. I'm going to go through the um, Iris configurator. And actually, Iris is a tool that you probably have heard about but if you never use it before you will see that you cannot miss this tool as soon as you are using that every day so first of all if you want to have all the information about iris with some training videos some <clears throat> information how to install it you can go on our partner web for customer they can go directly to iris and they will get more generic information about iris so here, if you search about IRIS, you get uh, the FAQ information, how to install it, how to create an um, account, and how to install it on a Mac OS if required. Next to that, you have some IRIS templates. So you have, for instance, some designs that have been made that you can use as an example. This is very useful. Uh, one that I'm going to show you is the EVD, so the Extreme Validated Design for Campus Fabric. You will see all the components that are documented in the um, Validated Design. So actually in the FAQ, you see how to uh, download the software, how to create an account, etc. This is quite easy. Uh, Iris is made by a company called Intenji. And if you go to intenji.com, you go to support <clears throat> and you will be able to create an account. So this tool is not a tool only for extreme product. It's also available for some other vendors. As, as, at extreme, we have decided to make it available for everyone. Only the prices that you uh, can get into the kit list are available to our partners. For other people, they can make a list, they can uh, put uh, all the devices together, make nice designs, but they don't get information about prices. So this is the reason why it's important to use your email that you are using as an account for our partner web. Otherwise, you are not recognized as a valid user to be eligible to see the prices. So then um, I have a, a, a few slides, but actually the goal is really to show you the demo. So let's go directly to the demo here. Um, wait a minute. So I have uh, uh, 
I guess that you can see my Iris um, window now. So here, um, what is important uh, to know when you install the software, it's like uh, every software running on a PC, you have to log in for the first time. And there are so, some important tools. And in order to be successful, those tools need to be correctly configured. So you have oh. different subscription. The first subscription is about uh, Extreme Networks price list and it's about selecting the right one. So you want to have the, the prices for EMEA. So Lord, then, yeah? I think we are not seeing the right uh, window. Okay. I'm seeing your, or at least I'm seeing the PowerPoint. <laughs> okay, that's not good. So, okay, let me uh, try once more. Um, okay, do you see my window now? Are you still see my PowerPoint now? Or you see my iris? Now we see the iris. No. Okay. And like this, do you see my my iris now? Yeah. Okay, that's better. So let's let's go back to uh so you you have to um select tools, go to subscription, manage subscription. And um, here you have extreme networks price list and you choose the prices you want to see. And obviously here in uh, Europe, you want the EMEA ones. Okay, so that's the first important point. And the second important point are the user options. So what you want here, it's especially here in the default setup to select your country, to select your power to, to 30 or to 20 to have the right power supplies and power cables, which is quite important, and your country, as well as the currency. So here, if you select another currency that US dollar, then you will have to enter uh, a rate somewhere. And actually, uh, I really suggest you to keep it with US dollar. You will send the kit list to your distributor and you will get a, a euro uh, quotes uh, from them. So here we do have a last one, which is the extreme services. So there are different services. Kirill explained that we have basically two extreme works and partner works. You can see all of them, or if you always, as a partner, provide to your customer partner works, you can select partner works only in order to have a shorter list of selection. So when this is done, you are ready to work. So it's a software with three windows. You have different windows here. And the first time you are using it, when you close one, you don't know how to find this window back. So here you have this window, and you see catalog on the left side, and this is properties in the middle, and on the right end, you have the one that stay always on. So this is the first thing that is important. No, you want to start, and what you want to do actually is to get this. Let me give you a, a good idea of what you can get. So this is a, a one that I did before. So I, if I open uh, the file, so let me close this to have a better visibility, okay? You see here that you have a nice design. You have all the devices into the design. You have all the connection together and you will be able to provide to your customer a list of material, a bond that you need uh, for this particular de uh, design. And you can print this and use it for your RFP. So as soon as you do print here, you can select what you want. Let's say that you want the block diagram. You want, uh, if you, are, uh, you have done it, you can at the racks, you can add the chassis views and the bill of material of whatever you want here. Let me give you a preview. So this is very nice to put in your offer. You have a, a, a nice eye level design. You have for each equipment, a chassis view, etc., And you uh, have everything to uh, document your um, configuration. So this is what you want to do. And now, I'm going to show how to reach that level. So let's go back to uh, all the windows here. Let me close uh, this one and close this topology, close the system, yes. So now let's say we start uh, 
iris and we get the latest information every time we uh, connect uh, with iris because we have uh, actually uh, a check for updates every time you start your uh, iris so you are sure that you have all the latest information for so far as product is concerned and for so far as prices is concerned so this is already good so by now you have on the right side uh, here um, possibility to create a new system let's say here uh, tech talk version 2 okay then uh, now you have some sites you can create some sites and the sites actually you can use that also to compare to configuration very often we make two or three variants of the configuration and we would like to see the impact on the feature and the impact on the price etc so what we can do here at, let's say i'm located in belgium so let's say the site in belgium here you can select different uh, power uh, if you have a site in the us for instance but let's say i have my first one and if i want to really put uh, belgium on, on the right uh, belgium uh, on the map i can do that like this i can make sure that i get it on the right uh, uh, streets and to create different sites connected together but it is a little bit cosmetic like let's say now i open my belgium site and i have an empty um, page that i can start uh, to use by now what i'm going to do i'm going to create a very um let's say easy network with core access and um, access point so what i'm going to do now i'm going to design a, a frame gr a group so i like to start with core no core okay so i have um, here a core and why i'm doing that because when i'm creating this grouping of devices i will definitely have a better report because I will see all the components for the core and all the components for the edge, etc., etc. Now, let's say I start to uh, look after the right uh, switch. And in this case, I want, um, let's say 10 gig here uh, um, switch, but a smallest one. So let's take uh, VSP 4900, 10 gig here, and I see here, already some information about the switch and all the version i have and sometimes you have bundles and it's not always so easy to see which bundles is uh, a b3 or a b1 you have seen that before but here with the description you get a good idea of what you have in that bundle so let's go for this one now it's important um, to see that uh, we have different tabs here so let me make it uh, clear so I have a description, I select this one, but now I have some options. So let's uh, go for a primary license and let's populate uh, the port I have with, um, oh, I did not select the 10 gig here. I select uh, the one gig. You see, this is uh, uh, no SFP plus instead of SFP. So let's uh, go a little bit further here. So I want to put some optics and I have a list of all supported optics. So I cannot mix up uh, and, and make uh, errors here by using optics that are not supported. So let's say well, I go for something very standard and I put 50 and you know, I only have uh, 24 port. It will say, no, 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 this is not possible. So this is a check you have as well. So let's say, no, I put 20. Okay, this is accepted now. Little bit further, I have a slot, a versatile interface module, and I'm able to put an interface here. So I want to connect them with, let's say, 40 gig. So I go for this one. Okay, this is done. Now uh, I have my power option. Power option, um, I have slot one, can select my power cord here. Slot two, I take exactly the same, and my power cord as well. Okay, that's fine. No, a little bit further, I have some accessories. Let's say all the cables, I don't want to select them here because I have another wonderful tool to connect switches together. Here I go to attribute and here next to that name, I would like to have an extended label. And here, let's say core 
1. So I have core 1, and you see that the name core 1 is uh, uh, appearing here. So now I will uh, just uh, make sure that I uh, put this uh, device into my core uh, subsection. Okay, this is fine. Now I want to have two, obviously, so I can copy and then I can paste. Where is the paste? Uh, here, okay, paste. Okay, this is the, the, the second one I have here that I can uh, put to my core group as well. But I have to change uh, something here because the name is core one. So I click on it and I can uh, navigate through all the tabs and I see core one, I put core two. Okay, core two, that's done. So I have uh, two nice switches connected together or not yet connected together. Together. That's uh, the point. So I can use this tool. You see, connect tool. I can right click and uh, use the connect tool here as well. Where is uh, the, the tool? Connect tool here is the first one. So it's up to you. We have always different ways to uh, go to the same menu. I like to use this one because, okay, I do this and I connect uh, my uh, switch. And I would like to connect uh, my switches with. Uh, let's say a QSFP, I can connect QSFP here and I can select the range of the type of cable I would like to have. Okay, and here sometimes it's important to have a look to this uh, length because if you keep uh, the default value 100 meter, there is no cable available. So let's say I, I'd like to have five meter and it will help you to validate that the length of your cables or your optics are correct. So I do this, close, and I have a cable here. Oh, this is nice. I have my cable. Uh, I can uh, deselect here uh, in order to um, have more information about my switch here to the left, to the right. Okay, that's nice. I have my core. So now let's have a look to um, add another design group for the edge. So here, let's say edge. Okay at my edge here and for the edge I'm going to my favorites because I know that the 450 is one of the switch I'm always using and so I have put uh, my favorite 450 in this section. So here let's say uh, a standard one uh, 48 port uh, with PoE 10 gig etc. Okay that's the one I would like to have here up and now uh, like I did for the core I set the design group to Edge this time. This is great. Now, do, do I need licenses? Probably not, but I need uplink. So I see I have two available ports. Let's go for 10 gig SR and here 10 gig SR as well. Okay, exactly the same. Um, then um, the goal is to connect uh, the switch together with the core. So again, the same story here up. I go for uh, SFP plus with SFP plus and um, uh, no, uh, this one 10 gig, actually 10 gig with 10 gig and I get, uh, let's say uh, something for, uh, I need 100 meter and I can select and connect uh, my uh, switches together. I do the same a second time. Okay, 10 gig, 10 gig. Uh, 100 meter, okay, that's that's connected, that's fine. So now I have a connection, I have one uh, switch, probably I will do the same different time to have uh, floor one, floor two, floor three, etc. But here, uh, in the interest of time, I'm going to keep it short. Then, obviously, today we want always uh, uh, access points, so if I go here, I go to mobility, I go to uh, maybe campus, I go to outdoor uh, or indoor access point, let's say. I can select uh, the 310. This is my access point. And you see that there are some uh, uh, red um, lines around the AP310. It's just because I have uh, no power here. I don't have any PoE because I don't have any cables yet. So now what I'm going to do, I'm going to connect my access point to my switch. Okay, on the access point, uh, side, you have to select a link, and here you see uh, I can select uh, the PoE ports. And again, let's say here it's a cable 50 meter 
and you can eventually select the cable you want. Okay, and now it's magic. There is no uh, red um, uh, 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 sign around uh, my, um, or line, I should say, around my access point because I do have PoE and enough PoE. If you exceed the power that you have in the X450, then you will get again the same, uh, the same problem. No, if I have 10 access points, I do not really want to uh, have 10 uh, icons. So what I can do, I select my access point, I go to attribute, and here I have a quantity multiplier, let's say 10. Okay, that's nice. Now you see uh, times 10, 10 here next to the name. This is good. And it's possible to have here, um, let's say, uh, some uh, information that you put here uh, next to the uh, to the label. I think I did not uh, type it correctly. I'm not able to type it. Okay, here type. No, I'm able. Okay, that's Wi-Fi, obviously. So this is the type of um, example that you have. Now you see to to get the same. Um, uh, level of uh, information uh, I add for the core and the edge, it's very good to draw a group frame. So let's say here uh, Wi-Fi, okay. So I put it here, so you can make it uh, very nice if you want. No, I will assign this one to the group, Wi-Fi. Okay, this is nice. So because I did that, I want to save it. And when I save uh, this, uh, so, Tech talk ver uh, version two. <clears throat> okay, you see the file is a ISF file. So this file can be only opened by uh, Iris, obviously. So now uh, we have all the material. We can use this in order to uh, document uh, our layout. And um, in some cases, you want to get info about the switch. So if I right click on a switch, I have here documentation. Documentation, you see an overview of the switch, the data sheet, for instance, then that opens a link uh, with your favorite browser and you get all the information. Honestly, when I'm looking after information, uh, I'm, I'm uh, uh, usually using this because it's very easy. I don't have to uh, do a lot of search. I do a search. Uh, on uh, iris, I put just an icon like this and I get access to all the information. But you have more than that. You have the installation guide. You have uh, all type of um, SFPs, the installation guide, everything you need. So this is very useful. And on top of that, if you don't know, oh, looks the chassis, you have a window like this and you really have a good view on the front view and the back view. Sometimes, you know, you are asking yourself, where are the power plugs? Oh, looks, uh, the fans, etc. You have it here. So, uh, and uh, again, this is something that you can reuse in your print. So now that we have done this, let's say, I want to use uh, the chassis view and the, 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 the block diagram, diagram and I do a preview and I get this to put into uh, my um, offer. So this is very nice to do. Now, it comes to the price because if we do this, it's not only to have a nice drawing, it's also to get the right prices. You see here, prices, it's important to bundle with services, obviously. So you have here two icons and the first one is a, a yellow plus. It's add-on parts and services. Okay, let's go for it. So here, if I expand a little bit to see all the information I have, uh, I see here all the, um, all the switches that I have selected. And what I see, <clears throat> I have different type of services. I have Extreme Works, I have Partner Works, I have Partner Works Plus, etc. And I see <clears throat> that I have different uh, flavor. And if I uh, go for, for instance, uh, next business day, and I go for next business day for this one, but for another one, I may want to have for the core here four hours, okay, on site for some reason. You see the prices appearing and you see also uh, uh, the information about the part number. 
when I have done uh, this uh, for all type of uh, product I have, I can just close and I can go for this uh, quotation. Now I have a quotation window and this is, this is interesting here because with my quotation window, I have um, the total price in this case and I have my site. So if I have multiple sites, obviously I will be able to see site by site or a composite, all sites together. In this case, I'd like very often to use the filters because if you only want to see the core or, or you want to see only the edge, it's here that you can select the list. And that's the reason why it's important to group all the devices together on your design. By now, you may want to see only power cords or only transceiver or only hardware and no services or the other way around, all the services. So, <clears throat> okay, so you select what you want to see. You select, uh, for instance, here everything uh, uh, in uh, this uh, list. And by now, it's also possible to uh, have a look to these filters. It's all you want to group them in the file that you will download because the ultimate goal is to export this list in a format that you will use like a comma separated uh, value or an Excel file, usually an Excel file. So here what you can do, you can uh, group them by product type, by rack, by site, whatever you want. And uh, uh, you may want to have a look to those uh, options in uh, some cases. So here, um, no, I have selected what I want. What I'm going to do is export to different type of format. So the most common one is export to Excel. So if you export to Excel, uh, obviously uh, yeah, there is a name, tech tool, up, save, and you have an Excel file. Uh, and do you want to apply the filter or not? Well, if you selected the flies, probably to uh, download it. So, uh, I'm not going to, uh, to open it on this um, uh, computer, but then uh, you have a right um, Excel file that you, you can reuse uh, in order to uh, send your quote, quote to your distributor. So let me have a look if I missed. Yeah, I think that I, I still have one point to mention here. Um, you can create, so let's close uh, this one, okay. Good, good. Um, uh, what you can do, you can open a new system. Okay, let's do this. Up. And you can <clears throat> create and reuse some templates. So this is a template uh, that have been uh, done for uh, Smart Omni Edge, for instance. Okay. Uh, okay, yeah, this is, it should be open at a site level. So site level here, for instance, okay. <clears throat> is loading and here you see um, the, the information regarding uh, uh, smart of omni edge design so um, it's important uh, to uh, save some template in order to save time uh, if you are uh, doing some sort of copy paste to different customer i really encourage you to use uh, this type of thing a last one that I would like to uh, show you, which is very convenient. Uh, no. So I create a new one again uh, uh, here. Now there's something wrong here. Open system here. Okay. Good. good. <clears throat> and it's for uh, management. Uh, MGMT management. So if we have some uh, management, here, let's have a look to, uh, not to mobility, obviously, not to switching, uh, to application. Uh, let's say that you want extreme management here. Uh, you have all the information about extreme management here. And this is very important. You have all the, the type of management you have. For instance, uh, you want an appliance or not and all about the licenses. This is very, very nice because sometimes we don't, do not know exactly what to select. If you want perpetual licenses or uh, other type of license, so you take, you take what you want and um, you have uh, immediately all the information you need. And this is exactly the same with cloud. 
So you have the search here. If you prefer to uh, use cloud a keyword, so you see cloud appliance. No, that's not what I'm looking for. I get it. It's cloud IQ pilot. Cloud IQ pilot, and I see here pilot that I can use it uh, in the cloud version uh, on premises. Uh, let's say uh, the goal is to use it in the cloud for cloud application. Obviously, uh, you can specify the number of years. Let's say three years. And for the number of devices you have, let's say 10, uh, no, not, not the keypad, uh, 10 uh, devices. Okay, and now it's not red anymore because I have put all the information required. Okay, so um, believe me, I can spend hours talking about uh, uh, Iris tool because I'm using that every day. It's so convenient. So, but uh, in the interest of time, I'm going to stop here unless you have some uh, uh, questions. And uh, I think that Kirill still have some uh, information yeah. for you. Yeah, Claude, I think we have a couple of questions regarding Iris. Um, so the questions are regarding support and quality support. So, uh, yeah. So the, the folks are trying apparently to quote like three year and five year uh, services and uh, for some of them, the three year option is not available. Yeah. And the general question is, for instance, how to quote like five years of partner work service, for example. Yeah, we have identified uh, already um, a few months ago that uh, there is room for improvement on the, um, uh, uh, on the extreme works quotation and the partner works quotation. So um, the team is working with Iris to um, enhance all the quotation to be able to quote multiple years. So this is um, something that we absolutely have to uh, uh, take into account in the next release. Um, for the moment, there are some um, uh, type of um, uh, let's say maintenance or uh, duration of the maintenance that are not really um, possible to configure. But then you, you, when you send it for a quotation, you have to mention that uh, um, this is for uh, more years, three years, multiple years, and it will be solved. And okay. the question about Mac OS, if you are not running the very last version, I mean, or the call the last version uh, once more, it's uh, the ending with 15. Um, uh, I have it here. It's Catalina. Yeah, 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 it's Catalina. So if you don't have Catalina, it, uh, you are able to use Wine. Uh, it's an emulation to run some um, a uh, 32 bit and 62 bit application. However, if you have uh, the latest one, Catalina, then you get into trouble because Catalina does not support 32 bit applications. And um, uh, Wine is, is only su supporting uh, 32 bit applications. So then you have to do like me to install a virtual box or uh, any uh, player, virtual player that, that you want. Uh, in order to uh, be able to run uh, Iris on your uh, Mac computer. The, I know that they, they planned to do a version for Mac, but they said that already uh, two years ago. So it's plan of dreams, at least for me. <laughs> I think... Okay, then um, let me... Um, show folks a, a few more slides, just uh, one announcement, and we are done for today, I guess. Um, okay, thank you, Claude. <clears throat> um, so one more tool that is available to all of you guys. Uh, <laughs> I, I, I think it's, uh, yeah, it's like maybe fifth time that I'm sharing that one with you, but anyway, uh, we have many websites in English, uh, Russian and Polish, where we publish um, the information that is more relevant to the, um, the region of Northern and Eastern Europe. Um, there's a lot of information um, on the Extreme Hero site, uh, some nice articles, and uh, which is quite important, uh, you can get all the uh, recordings of Tech Talks over there as well. 
just bear in mind that uh, in order to get to them, you have to be registered, right? So uh, there is a simple form, you fill it out and you get access to the recordings. Um, another thing that I wanted to just uh, briefly mention is that, is that, well, we have a lot of tools, we have um, a lot of documentation, various sites and um, applications. Uh, but the most important asset that we all guys have uh, is basically us, right? So it's our community of technical experts. It's um, the beautiful systems engineering team that is there. And basically the most important asset is the relationships that we have. Um, so I, I think that um, no matter how many tools we have in the background, uh, you can always count on the help of people because people are the most important and <laughs> critical asset um, in this and um, all the other parts. Um, I just uh, remember that I promised to take a look at the um, uh, to take a look at the optics and actually I did that. So uh, just getting back to the optics tool. So uh, there was a question regarding wavelengths. So uh, whether we can see them or not. Uh, we can basically, but it, it's not that um, I would say straightforward. So uh, if you if we go here and if we um, pick a particular module, we can click on it. Uh, we get into details, and here we do not see the wavelengths and um, information like that. But for each and every transceiver that is published here, we have this link, link to the documentation. If you click on it, you actually get to the document specific for uh, this module. And here in this document, you can actually get the information on the wavelengths. Okay. So, uh, yeah, that's just um, uh, answering the uh, question on the optics. So, um, important announcement. Uh, some of you folks um, know already uh, that one. So, on May the 28th, the last Thursday of uh, this month, we are going to. Uh, uh, hold the final session for this uh, Spring Tech Talks on Air initiative. And it's going to be a session which we call Ask the Expert. Okay, so we decided to make a live Q&A session uh, with all of you folks and uh, with the systems engineering team where you will be able to ask a lot of questions and um, hopefully <laughs> hear a lot of answers. And um, I think that I have almost finalized the approach that uh, we would like to use um, on the on the questions because I think that it's quite uh, important to get the questions in advance, as many as we can. So please expect a uh, link to the survey that we will be sending out to you, uh, asking just uh, one, two, or three questions. And you fill it up and it gets back to us and then we um, have at least have some understanding of what the questions might look like so that we do the session a bit more in a bit more uh, structured way. Okay, and I promise that for the, let's say 10 best questions, uh, we will um, figure out some nice giveaways. Okay, so uh, before we um, uh, disconnect, um, I will do the traditional polling. So I kindly ask you to answer the traditional question before you leave. And uh, with that said, I would like to uh, say big thank you to my team, to the team of systems engineers who uh, kept an eye on the Q&A and actually without whom this whole thing would not be possible at all. Um, thank you, Claude. Uh, thank you guys for investing your time and uh, staying with us today. Um, I hope it was useful, and uh, as we agreed, all the materials will be sent out to you uh, pretty shortly. Um, stay healthy and uh, stay tuned. Bye-bye, guys.